My friends, welcome to this very special episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. It's time for Luke and I to hit the road and do another cross-country road trip. That's right, folks. Every time that we go out for one of these trips, we put up our previous adventure in a movie format. This one is three hours long, so get the coffee ready. You can watch it all at one time, or you can break it up if you need to. I don't blame you for watching it piece by piece. It is long. It's also fantastic. That was such a fun trip, and I cannot wait for the next trip that's coming up. Should we give them like a hint of what we're doing? Yeah, yeah let's do it. We are heading to the desert. So oh, yeah. I'm not gonna say any places where we're going, but we wanna go out there before it gets too hot. It's gonna be hot, but not too hot. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we spooked that bird. I think so. Yeah, anyways, you're gonna see some new locations. You're gonna see some familiar locations. It is going to be an awesome time. And in two days, we're hitting the road. So folks, enjoy this movie. Again, get some coffee, get some snacks, have a good time. We will see you in the next adventure coming up soon. Thank you very much, folks. Take care. Bye. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, it is 8.19 a.m. It is 80 degrees, and Susie and I are in South Dakota. With this adventure, this marks part one of the 2022 summer road trip. This one we're doing a little bit different. We're not going to film like every single stop along the way. We are going to save that sort of trip for later on this year. For this adventure, we're picking up in South Dakota after roughly three days on the road. The travel out here has been just perfect. Folks, there's nobody on the roads. There were sections where it was just Susie and I and no one else. That's pretty crazy. I'm assuming that fuel prices and the economy play a big role in that. As far as the conditions go here in South Dakota, hot. Very, very hot. Where we are headed to yesterday, it was 110 degrees. And today is supposed to be much cooler at 92. I'll take 92 over 110 any day. Oh yeah. Folks, we'll talk more about this trip in a little bit. For now, let's drive. Good morning everyone. We are at a rest area in South Dakota. The first three days after leaving North Carolina, we took our usual route, which is through Kentucky. We hit Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa. We have been traveling and resting and stopping at parking lots like Walmart, Acabela's, and rest areas. And the heat has been pretty intense, so we've traveled, rested, and then picked up and traveled again for a few hours. We stopped here for coffee and oatmeal. For this trip, my friends, we are winging it. When it comes to any sort of adventure, you can make extensive plans or you can wing it. There's pros and cons for both. 
both can be filled with excitement or anxiety. So we've been on the road for three days, so far so good, but there are some big question marks coming up. One big question mark is heat. It's always a factor, it's something you have to consider. The next is wind. Today we wake up, there's like wind advisories in place, it's roaring outside. Where we are going for this first leg in South Dakota is a place called The Wall. Our destination is in the Buffalo Gap National Grassland and the camping spot that we have chosen is known as The Wall. It is right on the edge of a cliff and you are overlooking the badlands of South Dakota. With this trip we had a general idea of the states and the destinations that we wanted to go but we don't have any concrete plans. Luke and I have the freedom to have a little bit more time where the other trips were always like we had to get back home, we had pets to take care of, kids to take care of, and so we weren't allowed that extra freedom that if we enjoyed a place, we could stay an extra day. No matter what happens on this trip, it's going to be exciting. We have the next few weeks to explore and see what we can get into, and it's gonna be different as Luke and I like to offer a lot of variety. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. We would be filming this outside, but like we mentioned before, it is really, really windy out there. It's incredibly windy, but the one thing that we don't have to deal with here in South Dakota is high humidity. And that's what we experience back at home and all over the east. So as we were traveling, you couldn't just stop and go to a campground. I mean, you would be soaked, drenched in sweat, the humidity so high, none of that was comfortable. So it was easier to drive as much as we could and just stop for long breaks with the van and the AC and our fans while we slept at night. For the summertime camping trips, it's the humidity that really makes a big difference. And that's what we experience at home and on the East Coast. And that's not something that we have to worry about here. So it will be hot and we do need shade. You have to take precautions. You can't just be out in the sun all day, but I think that we will be able to camp. Having that low humidity, man, that heat almost means nothing. Almost. <laughs> yeah, and the wind, the wind is a good thing. Yeah. You know, times like this, but not necessarily to film in outside. <laughs> As Susie mentioned already, we've done our typical usual route to go across the country, and that involves going through Kentucky. I love Kentucky. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's a little bit redneck. I kind of like that. That translates to an interesting experience every single time you go through it. But the thing is, like, there's no traffic. The people are great. There's three main ways to go across the country from where we live. We can go a southern route, too hot. Middle of the country through Tennessee, I hate Tennessee. Everybody hates driving through Tennessee. Or you can go the northern route through Kentucky. We have been hearing from some of you all, the viewers, about your travels this summer. And the ones of you that have hit Tennessee, you were quick to say, oh my gosh, Luke and Susan, you were right. Tennessee is terrible. There are many large cities and a lot of road work. And so it makes for a very frustrating drive. Stick to Kentucky and you'll thank us. And as you all have found out, it is a very pleasant drive. I suppose another question that we have for the wall is how busy is this going to be? That's a big question, I don't know. It is entirely possible that this place is going to be packed, but it's going to be in the middle of the week. So we shall see. For now, we are going to drink some more coffee, eat some oatmeal, and then hit the road as we have a few hours left to drive today. With this trip, we will show you guys everything. So when things don't work out, we will show you what happens, what doesn't happen. We're gonna bring you guys along for every bit of this trip. Thanks for joining us for this part of our South Dakota road trip. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go Spend my coin for sure I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try Someone 
Susie? It's gorgeous here. It really is. It's very windy, but it feels incredible. I don't think it's as hot as was forecasted. We'll just tolerate the wind and enjoy this beautiful camping spot. If we do any sort of talking, it will have to be inside of the van, at least for now. Outside those winds, man, or ladies, it is uh, very, very windy. We have a spot here up on a hill and it is incredible. This is really, really cool. We have some good airflow coming into the van, so it's quite comfortable inside of here. Is it windy? Yes, it is. Susie, it is windy, but right here, perfectly fine. The winds are coming this direction, hitting the side of the van that doesn't have any doors. So we can actually have this side open and everything's good. The sun is definitely hot though. There's no doubt about that. As we sit here and chill, we have learned a few things. Number one, it's insanely beautiful here. Number two, it's insanely windy. And number three, it's insanely hot but thankfully the breeze makes it worth it and makes it doable. Unfortunately, we kind of just have to sit right here. There's not enough shade to put our chairs out. Hopefully as the day progresses, maybe the wind will die down. I don't know. As the sun moves, we may be able to get a nice shady spot and put our chairs out. But yeah, this is a great dispersed camping site, but it's really just for camping. You're not gonna be hiking around out here. It's too hot, there's no shade. You're not going to run off and play in the Badlands, but you can definitely sit here and take it in. Susie is right, folks. This is beautiful. It's beautiful, and at the same time, we're like prisoners of the van. You have to be in the shade. It's way too hot. The thermometer has been going up since we got here. Right now it's at 93 degrees, and as soon as you step out in that sun, you feel it. Luckily, there's a nice breeze, that does help. This is such a nice campsite, everyone. Just sitting here, staring at the Badlands. To the Native Americans, they called it land bad. And they called it that because it was so punishing, so grueling, there was no way through it. With the grasslands here, the only thing that you have to worry about are prairie rattlesnakes. They get to be around five feet long. They are venomous. But here's an interesting fact. There has never been a recorded death due to a prairie rattlesnake, ever. They hide in the shade and they hide in the tall grass. As I sit here and take in this view, I was just thinking, you know, it took us a few days to get out here, but this doesn't cost anything. This is a free dispersed camping spot. You could come up here in your car, your SUV. The road is really easy to access and it doesn't cost a thing. It's free. It's freedom. It's peaceful. I love trips like this.
Susie, is it hot enough for you? <sighs> Does that feel good? It feels so good. An ice cold uh, drink of some sort. Woo. On your face, on your neck. Whew, it is hot and dry. There has to be literally no humidity out there at all. It's low. It's very low. It feels really good to be honest, but the sun is hot and because of the wind you kind of get pelted with sand. So I've spoken about this in previous episodes. When it comes to camping out inside of your vehicle or even inside of a tent in hot conditions, it's all about airflow. If you have airflow, you can make it. If you have some water, you can make it. How does your body cool itself off? With sweat. How does that work? Evaporation. You could take a wet washcloth, a paper towel, put it on your skin, put it around your neck, put it around the main arteries in your body, and it's going to cool you off big time. Just like Susie's doing here. Luckily, tonight, it's going to cool off. That's one of the great things about the Badlands. Like, at times, it's a 50 degree temperature swing. Like yesterday, 110 degrees. The low last night was around 60. From 110 to 60 degrees. That's something else. It is. I wonder if we'll be getting all of our blankets out. Our we might. fleece blankets. <laughs> dinner time but it's still very windy here so we are keeping everything inside of the van and we are keeping a very low profile we put our tabletop on the floor of the van and we are just boiling water to make some ramen noodles and we're gonna add some tuna it's an easy meal and you need things like that when you are traveling because you don't know if you will be able to get outside and cook every time we don't want to cook inside of the van. We don't want to make a big smelly meat meal like burgers or something like that. So we're keeping it simple and we are still just kind of hunkering down and hiding from the wind and also the heat. It is incredibly windy out there, everyone. In fact, I think the winds are getting stronger. There were times where it was close to like pushing us off the mountain as we were walking around. <laughs> it's windy. Now we've had some really cool moments here. First off, we've just been kicking back, sitting here at the door, just watching these mountains. It's, it's incredible. Next, there are some bighorn sheep sleeping right below us. <laughs> we were out hiking around, we saw them. They're right down here. It's so cool. Susie, those are the first bighorn sheep I've ever seen. It is for me as well, and that's one of the exciting parts of this trip is I think we're gonna see way more wildlife than what's normal. South Dakota has been absolutely beautiful, and this is just the start of it, so I'm super excited about what's to come and what we will see. I think Susie's right. Typically when we go out west, we see zero animals. I'm not sure if there are any in like Colorado, except for like one trip we saw some moose. That, yeah. was, that was it. Yeah. Nothing, Nothing ever. Just too many people scaring off the animals and whatnot, but this trip has been different. Speaking of animals, during dinner, we'll tell you all about this crazy experience we had with a red-tailed hawk at a park on the way out here. It was nuts. I really enjoyed the sound of the screaming kids. Oh gosh, when we tell this story, you all will see what the reality of nature is. It's beautiful, it's incredible, but there's a side to it that it's easy to overlook. Horrific. Horrific side, yeah.
this has been absolutely fantastic. I've enjoyed this immensely, folks. This day has been so low-key, so relaxed. It's gorgeous here. It's quiet, it's peaceful. Thank God for that wind, though. Like, we can't film outside because of it, but that's okay. That is the only thing keeping us remotely comfortable. If it wasn't for that wind, it'd be so raging hot here. So true. Okay, so let's talk about this National Geographic moment that we had on the way here involving this red tail hawk. Okay, so I don't even remember what, what state was that. I'm not sure. You guys know how we travel. We hit up rest areas and parks like that and we'll stop and make our food. And so we had stopped for lunch. I think it was Iowa, but anyway, so yeah, we stopped. We're having lunch. We're out at this picnic table. And so like a little ways in front of us is another table with a family there. Young kids, wife, you know, husband, all that stuff. And like the whole place is just alive with birds, baby birds in the trees, birds all over the place. Everybody's having this swell time, right? So all of a sudden this huge red tail hawk flies in and lands on some sort of like sculpture, right? And we're all like, wow, this is so cool. So I go get the camera, I take a picture. Now, I will be showing pictures of this and I'm not going to show anything graphic, but disturbing for some audiences. Anyway, so, this hawk is sitting there, he's watching, we're all in awe, the kids are like, wow, this is so cool. That's when I like, I turn around and I hear them like start screaming and I look back over and that hawk has like flown in and grabbed like a bird's nest, like a robin's nest and starts eating these birds alive. Yeah, so like kids are screaming, like there's like a little boy, he's like, that's cool. And the little girl's like crying, you know. Well, that hawk just goes on a full-on rampage. It flies over to this bush about like 100 yards away. I go up to it and it is like diving into a bush and it is pulling out baby birds, swallowing them whole. It was so sad. The robins were just in a panic and, and you know, trying to like attack the hawk and trying to make him go away. But I mean, he's a huge, huge predatory bird. He was not intimidated. He did not care that there were tons of people there. And the funny thing is, is like he flew in and you could see he was taking in everything that was happening and he was like planning his attack. And at first I thought maybe the family, they were feeding him like their picnic food. That's what I thought. Because he came so close to them. No, I, I think I got a blurry picture of like a bird in its mouth as it was like about to fly away. Yeah. And then it was just awful. He would not stop. He just stayed there the uh, rest of the yeah. afternoon, just like munching all the birds. And it was just so sad. Like little kids were crying. And like, I'm not going to stop it from doing this because like that's nature for you. There's a reason why that hawk was as big as he was. There's a reason why hawks and eagles, they're as big as they are because they're predatory animals. They're snatching up birds, squirrels, mm -hmm. rabbits dogs, cats. There's numerous videos online of like people at the park and a big hawk swoops in and steals their favorite little dog and like awful things happen. Yeah. You know? And that's the reality of nature. You can't stop a bird like that. That's nature for I you. I mean, it's just nature. That's how it goes. That's what happens. And it was definitely a National Geographic moment <laughs> yeah, in was. every sense, you know, magnificent <laughs> to like horrific. And yeah. then we all just felt so sad for all the birds, but definitely that hawk knew what he was doing and he had done it before, oh, I yeah. think, so. I'm pretty sure that guy patrolled that that park. That was his zone. I mean, that hawk was huge. Yeah. At first I thought it was an eagle. It's probably the biggest red-tailed hawk I've ever seen. It was gorgeous, but so sad, yeah. so tragic, so. Crazy. Anyway. Now it's time for dinner, folks. <laughs> that that was story time. <laughs> story time. Story time. As for the sun, it's beginning to go down. We have another about an hour and 15 minutes of light left before it really gets dark. But for this meal here, as Susie said before, it's a type of like teriyaki ramen. We put some tuna in it. It's fantastic. It's a great meal. Super simple to make. Super easy. The tuna is ginger flavored, so... Mm -hmm. It works well together and it's one of those meals where you don't have to cook or do anything except boil water. So, are you ready to eat? Yeah, you first. All right. Mm. Smells good. Is it hot? No. Mm. 
Not with this wind. Cools everything <laughs> off. <laughs> it does. have actually calmed down like it's breezy it's not windy feels great also it's cooling down right now inside of the van 50 i'm dyslexic 85 degrees <laughs> 50 <laughs> like the heat will drain you it's just been so damn hot <laughs> definitely the heat is exhausting but we've had a great evening. We made dinner. We've been watching the bighorn sheep climb on the sides of these cliffs. It's been really peaceful. I'm hoping to see buffalo. There's buffalo out here as well, and that would be incredible to see one. Maybe tomorrow? Fingers crossed that we yeah. will see that. It's hard not to be in awe of this place. Sit here for hours staring at it. You don't have to say anything, just look. It's one of those views that you get lost in. Mm -hmm. As like the sun changes, as it's going down, the landscape changes. So like you've been staring at something for like two hours and it's changed like every 30 minutes. It looks different. You see something else to it. It's really peaceful. I think we can even leave the doors open if we wanted to yeah. while we're sleeping tonight. We can put in our screen. Luckily, bugs, haven't been an issue. I've seen a few flies, but I think they have moved on. Very nice. Very peaceful. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. It is a little bit after 6.30. We got up at 5.30, watched the sunrise. At 5.30, it was 63 degrees. Right now, one hour later, it is 93 and going up. It is hot. And unfortunately, it's not very windy. It is a very warm morning, sitting in the floor of the van, getting ready with the sun just beating on you. I'm already hot for the day. But we are going to make some coffee breakfast and hit the road because it is time to do some driving and exploring. like I'm not going you guys go on all right everyone we are now on the road and as you can see we've been driving past our friends the cows last night at this campsite it was incredible very comfortable cool it was a really nice night a fantastic place to camp very peaceful and quiet Susie how did we get so lucky I don't know we really <laughs> got lucky with yeah. a fantastic spot I mean it is gorgeous out here on the prairie. Right now we have entered Badlands National Park and we are doing the drive through the park. 
We have already seen some prairie dogs and some kind of deer. I'm not sure what it is exactly. But this place is beautiful and you can see so much just from your vehicle. So that's the different thing about this trip is that we really wanted to see stuff. You know, we've done these crazy backpacking trips and hiked, you know, 30 some miles and haven't seen a single animal. So it's pretty cool to be in a place like this and you can actually see it from the comfort of your car. Driving through the park here, everyone, is awesome. This is definitely a cool place to go, a cool place to see. There are so many pinnacles, all these jagged mountains. At the same time, just being outside, taking pictures and whatnot, it's brutal. It is so hot. That sun, that's mean Bob right there. B.O.B., big orange ball, oh yeah. As we're driving through the Badlands National Park, all I can think about is one of our previous trips to New Mexico where we backpacked through the Badlands. This is like the touristy version. You can ride in your vehicle here, whereas we like hiked it previously. Both are very cool. It, it's a very similar experience in many ways. For this section here, we're up on top of this plateau looking down at the Badlands. It's really, really neat. One cool aspect to this park is that you can disperse camp pretty much anywhere you want to. There's certain regulations like being so far away from a road and whatnot, but this is pretty much open country. Now personally, I think that's kind of funny. You could disperse camp anywhere you want to, basically because they know nobody will. This landscape is way too harsh. There's no shade, no water. There's a reason why no one is camping out here. We are finishing up this drive through Badlands National Park and the beauty here is just unreal. But it is time to move on. We are heading across South Dakota today. We are actually headed towards Mount Rushmore and we will be dispersed camping in the Black Hills National Forest. We have some traveling to do and some work to do to figure out our camp spot. Alright everyone, we stopped for a world famous buffalo hot dog. My question is, what part of the buffalo goes into the hot dog? I don't know. Who knows. 
With the Ford Transit van, did you know that it has a built-in hot dog holder? Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Look at that, Susie. It's perfect. These hot dogs are $4 each, so uh, they better be really, really good. All right, Susie, tell us how it is. All right. Good? Mm -hmm. Worth four dollars? Mm -hmm. mm. It's good, but all hot dogs are good. I would say this is a two dollar hot dog, <laughs> <laughs> not four dollar. You forgot about inflation. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Biden? <laughs> Welcome to the Black Hills National Forest in South Dakota. Luke and I have found our dispersed camping spot for the night and we are literally minutes from Mount Rushmore, which is pretty cool. We can actually hear the helicopter that does the tours there. So we have a little bit of a view behind us and we've popped up our moon awning, which is what we carry with the van. And this will shade the entrance to the van, but actually on the other side, it's already shady. We have a breeze. It's a really sweet spot. So moments ago, we wrapped up going to Mount Rushmore. In my opinion, it was okay. I'd give it a five out of 10. It was a little bit more like touristy than I was expecting. That's my rating. Susie, what's yours? I would give it about a five as well. The monument is stunning. It's something you can see as you drive by, but I wanted to actually pull in and park and get a really good picture. I think it's one of those things, it's a national treasure mm -hmm. and it's something that I've always wanted to see and I wanted to do more than just drive by. Right. So I really enjoyed stopping, getting a photo, but it was one of the most busiest places that yeah. we have stopped at in a really, really long time. And with the 97 degree temperatures, it was <laughs> a, a quick, short visit in and out yeah i think honestly we spent more time in the uh parking deck yeah i think you're right actually <laughs> yeah yeah but um hey i mean you don't want to drive this far and be like oh i should have done that so. right so mount rushmore not my style this here that's much more up my alley this is perfect it and is. this is one of those things that while we were parked at Mount Rushmore, we quickly found this dispersed site. I knew that the Black Hills National Forest was here, and I know that you can disperse camp in National Forest. So right. we actually planned this just like on the fly. We didn't plan to like be so close to Mount Rushmore. It just worked out that way. So whatever day this is on the road, we are done. We are parked <laughs> for the night and you did good finding this. We did good. Actually, I have to give some uh, shout outs to our Patreon donators. We had multiple viewers comment and tell us about the Black Hills area to check it out. So thanks everybody. We appreciate it. Now it's coffee time.
My friends, it's coffee time. Cheers. It is a beautiful day here in South Dakota. The day's cruising on, it's about 440. It is hot. I mean, it's like 95 degrees. It's warm. Talk about a really, really nice place to camp. It's peaceful, quiet. We haven't seen anyone, haven't heard anything, with the exception of the like random helicopter flying over. But this is nice. As I've been sitting here enjoying the coffee and this view, I've been researching the Black Hills area. I was interested in what movies have been filmed here, and there's been quite a few. So, Dances with Wolves, some portions of that movie were filmed here. The same goes for National Treasure, and there was a few other movies as well. If you go back to where we camped at last night, in the Badlands, a ton of movies have been filmed there. Starship Troopers, which is a fantastic movie. Oh, let's see. There was another one. A movie with Val Kilmer. I'll have to flash the name on the screen. I don't remember it. But, um, Thunderheart. That's what it is. This trip goes to show that even with very little planning, you can go out and you can have amazing adventures. At no point in time have Susie and I known what we were going to do for certain. We've just been playing the entire trip by ear, off the cuff, and it has worked out so incredibly well. Now, the thing is, when you do it like this, when you plan like this, or not plan, when you just hit the road, when you just go, you have no idea what's going to come your way. Things may go right, things may go wrong. So far, things are going great. But at any point in time, something could have gone amiss, right? We could have gone to any of these locations and they're just so busy where we couldn't find a place to camp or something like that. Anything is possible, but so far, so good. Before we start dinner, everyone, I figured that we would go over some of the new products that we're testing out with this trip. So we picked up a few items here to begin testing out so that we can review later on. So here are the products that I'm talking about. First off, we have the Moon Shade. Now this is very interesting. This attaches to your vehicle with suction cups and you can use it with the van. I can use it with my truck. I can also use it with our new cabin that's at Lone Wolf Mountain. It'll attach to basically any flat surface, and that's pretty neat. It's really versatile, and it was designed for stealth mode. So you don't have to have something permanently attached to your vehicle. And I really like that about this product. We have used it in numerous applications, and we have had it in the van for our previous trips, but unfortunately the wind <laughs> was too rough for it. So it's been great to be able to get it out on this trip. Susie touched upon this being for like stealth mode, and I think that's so important, especially as you travel across the country. Anytime that you have a decked out vehicle that just screams overland, you're going to be a target for vehicle break-ins and so on. With the economy being as bad as it is right now, like break-ins for vehicles is like out of this world. It's super high. Most national forests, national parks recommend that you stay with your vehicle because there's so many break-ins. So there's a big benefit to that. There really is. It's an unfortunate aspect of the day and time that we're living in right now. And we will have a van video coming up, but that's my favorite thing about the van is that it sort of just looks like a large passenger van and we can take it anywhere and it doesn't scream that, you know, it's full of stuff. We always kind of shut the blinds and put in our sunshade, but it's important not to have so much stuff on the outside of your vehicle. To put it simply, you don't want to make yourself a target by covering the outside of your vehicle with tons of gear. The next piece of equipment to talk about is the Dometic fridge that we're using. This is a larger version. In the past, we used a very small one. What was the liter size on that? Do you remember? We were using the 28 liter size, which they have discontinued. They no longer make that model. And we have upgraded to a 45 liter one, and it is quite a bit bigger. We have that thing packed full. And it's kind of nice because you don't have to resupply as often, but it is bigger. One thing that we've noticed so far while using this product, this new fridge, is that it's very energy efficient. Whereas the other one, it did a good job as well, but we figured that the energy loss would be quite a bit more. And I can't say that we've really noticed much of a difference between the smaller size and the bigger one. I like it a lot. The only issue that I had was that it takes up a bit more of our floor space. So if space is like a really important factor, you have to consider it. But we wanted to test it out because it's nice to stay out longer and not have to hit up a store. Plus, you all ask about these larger ones all the time. So our review, will be coming up in the future. Since we're talking about the fridge, we have to talk about power. So for this trip, we have some additional power components that are helping us 
basically stay out longer. With our previous overland trip, we went down to the coast and we had issues. We ran out of juice. It was just so freaking hot down there. We consumed all of our power. That means the fridge didn't have power and everything spoiled on the inside. So we've upgraded just a little bit here. For this trip, we are using our Blue Eddy power unit, but this one has an expandable power pack with it that we have brought along to test out. We have an additional 2000 watt hours of juice just in case we need it in a relatively small form factor. It's nice to be able to have that much power, shove it underneath the seat and access it when we need it. For dinner, folks, we have bacon cheddar cheeseburgers with a little bit of barbecue sauce on the side. Super ooey, gooey, and delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, everyone, it is beginning to cool down. After a very long, hot day, it is cooling down. Today has been good, though. It's been a ton of fun. I was thinking about this earlier. Okay, so out west, super hot during the daytime, but it's a dry heat, right? Low humidity. So at nighttime, the sun goes down, it cools down. It's super, super comfortable. I would say overall today has been really pleasant. It has been. The shade has been great here in this camp spot. I was thinking like how different last night. <laughs> right. How different was that from tonight? It's yeah. just like day and night. Luckily, we've been by ourselves the entire time so special it is so special yeah. and I, I don't know if that goes to like what we said before about bad economy high gas prices but there's not many people out on the roads there's not many people out on the trails it's mm -mm. very unusual in fact all right, all right let's let's go for this let's try this same time yeah i'm gonna should we dip i'm Can gonna go dip? without a dip first okay no dip so, okay ready here we go okay mm. Freaking fantastic, folks. Mm. That bacon really takes it mm, mm -hmm. right up to the top. You might be wondering about a fire tonight. Even though we have an awesome fire pit, there was a sign saying no fires. So I'm going to follow that rule, no fires. Plus, this place is so dry. Even if you could have fires, I don't think I would have one. It's too windy, too dry, not gonna fool with it. I have to say that this Jack Daniels barbecue sauce is out of this world. It's really good. It's like maple barbecue, so it takes the burger to like a new level, yeah, new flavor. It is <laughs> fantastic. So as far as all of our traveling and all the states that we have been to so far, I will say that South Dakota is really clean. Mm -hmm. They're doing a great job. I mean, just driving the highway, everything was really clean. We didn't see a lot of trash. And with our camping experience so far, all of the campsites have been really clean. At the same time, Everything has felt like extremely safe. Mm -hmm. All of the areas seem good. Everything's well maintained. I mean, like some places you go out and you're like, oh man, what are we doing out here? The entire state's been fantastic. Yeah. It has a wild remote feeling. Yeah, it does. But we're not nearly as remote as some of the trips that we have gone to. Right. You get the feeling here that like everybody has a handgun like at the ready. <laughs> like everybody's prepared to take care of themselves, which makes a lot of sense. That makes you feel safe in a way. Maybe you understand what I'm talking about, maybe not. But anyways, folks, we are going to finish up dinner and basically call it a night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have some traveling to do tomorrow. Who knows where we're going to end up? <laughs> I can't wait to find out. I have no idea. <laughs>
Good morning everybody. It's a good cool morning. We woke up freezing and that's basically because we left the van open and let all of the cool air in. So we woke up to like 60 degrees and it's chilly. The wind was blowing right into the van. So Luke had to get up and close the back doors and now it's kind of warming up again. But I definitely slept great because of that cool air. Very quiet here, very peaceful. No complaints. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Like Susie said, good, cool morning. It's like 59 degrees. <laughs> I haven't felt that in a little while. At least on this trip, I haven't felt anything like that. Last night, I was laying here in the van, just listening. And it was the most unusual experience because, like, it wasn't just, like, silent. I mean, it was more than that. The only sound that I could hear was, like, my heart beating. It was that quiet. There was, like, no wind, no bugs, nothing. Just absolute, complete silence. I'm not sure if I've ever heard it that silent before. When you're laying there and all you can hear is, like, thump, thump 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 like that's quiet we got a notification on our phone saying that rain was going to begin in about 10 minutes looked at the radar there is some showers going by i'm contemplating taking down the awning real quick putting up a dry awning is a win putting up a wet awning and have to deal with it later on that's a loss so i guess i'll go ahead and just take the thing down real quick it's time to get to action folks that's what i'll do kitty I want you to stay right there. It's time for men to act and for little ladies to stay warm. I'll be back. I'll be back to take care of your needs real soon. I'll do what you say.
We have hit the road and we are headed to Custer State Park. We want to do the scenic drive that they have there. We heard you can see lots and lots of wildlife. So that's the plan for this morning. And then after that, we will make the plans for the rest of the day. We do plan to camp in the area or at least in the Black Hills National Forest again. So we will be looking for another campsite later on. It looks like here in about nine miles we'll be at Custer State Park. Can't wait to see this place. I have to say so far everyone, South Dakota has truly impressed me. This is a beautiful state. There's so much variety out here. It's just incredible. The prairie forest, the Black Hills, I mean it's, it's something special. The only thing is, folks, it's hot. It's hot. Coming back in the fall and exploring this place in more detail, doing some hiking, that would be fantastic. Unfortunately, because of the heat during the day, it's almost impossible to do a lot of hiking out here. It's beautiful here, and I definitely think that there's a lot more to explore, but it would have to be done at a different time of the year. Susie, it looks like you have a little bit of a problem. Yes, I'm gonna just stay put right here, let them do their thing. This is my first Buffalo traffic jam though. Alright everyone, we just wrapped up Custer State Park, which was awesome. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been. It was incredible. Now we are going to head on a road called Needles. Honestly, I'm not sure what this is, but we've had so many viewers tell us that we have to do it. So we will. Susie, I have no idea what to expect. I don't know, but I'm kind of nervous. Like, is it like a crazy, twisty, turny road? Um, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out very soon. Folks, let's continue on.
Susie and I are basically at the top of this mountain. We're still in South Dakota, outside of the Crazy Horse Memorial. In fact, at the top of this mountain, I believe you can see the uh, memorial, but basically we're camping next to the road. This is a forest road, and basically you could camp anywhere that you want to out here. There's really not that many spots. This is about the best of the best, but it is beautiful. It really is. Right now with the van, we're basically playing the game of like parking it in the shade and as the sun moves, we move too. That is the only way really to stay cool and comfortable here. Otherwise, it is so hot, so hot. As far as the elevation goes, right now we are almost at 7,000 feet. It's like 6,700, something like that. While it's still very warm up here, at least it's not raging hot like it was at a lower elevation. My friends, it is coffee time. Cheers. Cheers with the ant on it. I don't mind at all. <laughs> extra, <Cheers. laughs> extra protein. Right. <laughs> Cheers, Susie. Cheers. You never forget the cheers, lady. I think this heat's getting to me. I think so. <laughs> I'll just drink your coffee. <laughs> it's funny, it's like in the sun, I mean, it's like 90 something degrees. Here in the shade, like it's so breezy, it's so dry. Like it's almost to the point where you need a jacket. Like it's almost chilly. It's funny how it's all because of that sun. We call it Mean Bob, big orange ball. Man, that son is mean. He is mean. <laughs> I think he's fried my skin. Yeah. I'm one of those people that I do not really tan at all. I stay this color no matter how much I'm in the sun. I'm only going to go from this color or red. <laughs> so I feel like he like burns my skin. Yeah. Then I come sit in the shade and I'm like, Ooh, I'm cold. <laughs> I'll definitely be getting a jacket later yeah. tonight. And I know that we won't leave the van open. Not the, all uh, of it. The low tonight is, what, 40? 48. 48, yeah. We're at quite a bit of a higher elevation than we were the last couple of nights. But I tell you what, this has been such a great trip. It's funny, no one ever mentions South Dakota. But it is amazing. I have fallen in love with this state. It's beautiful. I think we're sitting over 7,000 feet right now in elevation. Close to it, yeah, I think. And it's beautiful here. And I was scrolling through my pictures that I've taken and I was just like, wow, look at the vast differences in the landscapes that we yeah. have encountered. South Dakota is not the state that people talk about, but like they should, this place is incredible. I wanna come back in the fall. I think it'd be really, really cool to explore this land. You know, it's like with the Black Hills area, it's vast. And you can go anywhere you want to. And there's a lot of places to go. A little bit of research, just a little bit of planning. I mean, we've basically gotten up, done a few things, pulled over, had lunch, said, okay, where are we going to camp tonight? And we've been able to figure it out. On and the fly. On the fly. You know, none of this was like done beforehand. Mm -hmm. And it's been really neat, the places that we have found. And it's not busy, guys. It's not busy. <laughs> it's, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, like, we went to, like, Mount Rushmore. That was busy. But everything else? No. Yeah, we had to stop at some of these sites. I mean, if you're all the way out here, we're from North Carolina. It takes a lot of work to get out here. <laughs> a lot of work. And I was like, if I'm going to be that close, I just want to see it. So, things like that, super busy. So, Mount Rushmore, I give it a 5 out of 10. It's okay. Uh, Crazy Horse, I give that a 3 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, like, that's been the same forever. You could see people up there doing stuff, but, like, it has not changed in a really long time. I don't know what they're doing, but no. it should be done in about 100 years. They started work on that in, like, 48. That's crazy. Yeah. That's Crazy Horse. Well, I just thought we, you know, we would have to see that, too. It's all in the same area. So, why not, you yeah. know? It's so funny. It's like... I'm so antisocial that you know, so we go there and I'm like, ah, I really feel out of place here. Then I head off into the woods and I'm like, ah, feels good. <laughs> a special thank you goes out to everyone who was uh, speaking to Susie and I about coming to South Dakota. The Needles Highway was incredible. That was so much fun, so beautiful. Yeah, we really appreciate the suggestions. Mm -hmm. And that happens quite often because we get emails and messages from tons of viewers. And Luke and I both 
read the emails and the messages. And, and we're taking notes. You yeah. guys say something cool, we write it down and we go back to it. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't know if you ever mentioned it, but a viewer said that we should try like real authentic oh, Korean yeah. food. And we actually got the chance to do that. We were out of town and we were like, okay, let's see if there is a Korean restaurant, like a real authentic one. And we found it and the food was incredible. And I was Amazing. just like, you know, we probably would have never done that if someone hadn't said, hey, you do need to go find this and check mm -hmm. it out. And so a lot of things you just don't think about. Yeah. Yeah, so guys and gals, thank you so much for everything. We really appreciate it. Just as with all of the other trips, this was done or this trip is being done on a very low budget. We haven't stayed at any hotels. Everything we're using in here pretty much makes sense for the common person. Nothing's crazy expensive. We have been able to cook most of our meals. We have grabbed a few things out, like the, the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> the $4 hot dog. The $4 hot dog. <laughs> uh, but there's a big difference with this trip versus previous trips some of the years that we were traveling were like right in the middle of covid things weren't open and we just didn't really go in anywhere so we've had a little bit of uh more freedom i guess with this trip yeah. about covid's over yeah yeah i think that's like the biggest change from all of the previous trips covid's over no one's wearing a mask all the little small businesses they are running all of the restaurants are open yeah. again and so we do cook most of our meals but we've definitely had a few times where we've grabbed something and and that's been fun too yeah it has yeah. been For tonight's dinner, I am making some beef lo mein. It's ramen noodles again, but I have some steaks and a green pepper that I'm gonna add to it. This is a meal that I was gonna use earlier on in the trip, but due to the wind, we haven't been able to do much cooking until last night, and we went with cheeseburgers. But tonight, it is beef lo mein. So you may be wondering, Luke, Susan, why are you guys hiding right here behind the van? Well, that's because the winds are just like coming this way. This is like the only wind-free spot. And to be real with you guys, we're tired. We didn't put up our awning. <laughs> we're like, we just want to take a break. We just want to rest. It's been a really good day, but after a full day of driving around and being out in the sun. And filming. And filming. And then when you get to camp, you're just kind of like, okay, What's the bare minimum that we have to do? So, all right, let's eat. Okay, I'm hungry. Yeah, thank you so much, Susie. This looks awesome. Yeah, this looks really good. Ladies first. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Simple, good. Mm hmm. That is fantastic. Mm hmm just like this campsite. I know, it's so peaceful here. Mm -hmm. I like the view because you can just see all the way around us, you have a view. You can see mountains way off in the distance. We have all these trees, but it's very open. So you can just see long distances. It's very interesting how like with this landscape, it's like the prairie meets the forest. The reason they call this the Black Hills is because like the appearance of the trees, they're dark. That's the reason why. The Native Americans would call this the Black Hills. A little while ago, we received an email from a guy, and he was asking whether or not it's camping when you watch a movie at night, like I oftentimes do. My answer to that question is pretty simple. The way that you want to camp is the right way. If there's something that you like to do, do it. And it's not my place to decide whether or not someone's camping or not. I always thought that was a, a silly question. Respectfully, but a little silly. It goes back to like, there's not one right way to do it. Yeah. 
if you like to car camp, you're still camping. You're still getting out there. If you enjoy doing like the really long distance and being like super minimalistic, it's still camping. You're still enjoying mm -hmm. the outdoors. We're all enjoying it in one way or the other. Some people just love to like load up their car, cook a huge meal, you know, steaks and kick back, relax. Maybe when you go camping, that's the only time that you get to like watch a movie or do something that you want to do because when we're at home, we're easily distracted. It's true. You know? So I think it's important, like, do it however you want to. Eat whatever you want to. It doesn't <laughs> matter, you yeah. know? I think that's, that's, that's what's important at the end of the day. It's like, it doesn't matter. Don't critique others. Yeah. Do whatever you want to. Just enjoy it. I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. Enjoying it. Do it your way, folks. You could do a trip like this, or it could be simple, or it could be more complex. Yeah, you can do this on your private property. You could do it in your backyard, you know. You can take that email, and you can look at it in kind of like the way that like society is today. People love to judge others. Let's get away from that. Everyone do their own thing. Do it your way. Yep. Be unique. Be, be weird. It's all okay. It's yeah. all good. We're going to wrap things up here and finish our dinner. But I'm going to end on this note, and I want everyone to go live their best life. Do it how you want to do it when it comes to enjoying the outdoors. And feel free to share with us what you do and share with the community what you do because maybe we want to try it. And you may want to try what we do. Maybe the next time you go camping, you want to watch a movie. So Or listen to a podcast when you hike. Yeah. I have a friend of mine. He is a serious outdoorsman. I mean, like he's hiked the AT and so on. I think he's done that actually twice. He listens to music and podcasts the entire time. So loud, like, he can't hear anything. <gasps> but, like, to him, that's how he does it. And I think it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I have nothing to say. I'm tired. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Life is so good. We don't have anything else to say. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're done. Bye. See you later, okay? Bye. I'll talk to you. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Our burden friend over here. <laughs> That's what I call the camera, my burden. It's a growth. It is a growth. But... Yeah. Ah, it's so much fun. You just have to have energy, which I don't have. Okay, I'm done. All right. <laughs> We're eating. It is time to go to bed. It's been a really good day. It has been a good day. I'm tired and ready for sleep, and I know I'm going to sleep good. I'm actually covered up. Feels good tonight. Yeah. For the first time tonight, it feels amazing. Yeah, usually it's kind of hot, and so we don't even bother with a blanket, but tonight I'm prepared. I'm already covered up. I have some extra blankets, and... Uh, I'm good. Yeah. I, I sleep next to the wall of backpacks, but, you know. That's comfort right there. I it wish is. I had a wall to sleep next to. The <laughs> coolness. Oh, Want to switch? No, I, I've really bonded to these <laughs> This is like my spot in the van. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I always sleep on this side, and I have a all the pillows and a super comfortable setup, so I can't give it away. I sleep in very odd positions. <laughs> I toss and turn all night long. It's more like I pass out. I don't go to sleep. I just... <laughs> I roll until I pass out. <laughs> That's how I do. So, uh, Let's see. Uh, we did move the uh, van back a little bit. Leveled it just a little bit. You know, it's funny. It's like you see oftentimes with like these overland channels. These people, they spend so much time leveling their vehicle. Like when you're from the mountains like we are nothing's level so it's like you just get accustomed like i've never once leveled a vehicle ever 
No. I mean, <laughs> here's a secret. All you have to do is just sleep with your head higher than your feet. That's all you have to do. So, I mean, you know, sometimes we sleep this way and then sometimes I have to put my pillows down there and put my feet this way. It's not a big deal. That's the secret is just park where you want to, park where it looks flat. And then when you crawl into your bed, just make sure your head is higher than your feet. Yeah. It's that simple. <laughs> it's so simple, but yeah, I've seen people really work super hard to get things like really level. And I'm just like, yeah. I don't understand why they're doing that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We're accustomed to rolling around all night. That's how that goes. Nothing in the mountains is ever flat. You just no. don't know. All right, folks, we're going to bed. Good night for now. Good night. See you in the morning. Good morning, my friends. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. Last night was absolutely incredible. Where we slept at, it was so cool, so comfortable, so quiet. Not a single car, nothing went by. Last night you experienced just how quiet it is here. Like, you don't hear anything. Did not hear a single thing. I could not believe that there were no cars, no one was out. This place is pretty remote and no one comes up here you know this morning we haven't seen anyone heard anyone and we're making our way out on these gravel roads but it's just this was a really good find really good and with that everybody we are going to wrap up part one of this road trip our plan is to head to Colorado unless something catches our eye hmm maybe we'll see but folks thank you so much for joining us for this trip Make sure to stay tuned to part two, which is coming up soon. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. If you want to support the Outdoor Gear Review, you can do so on YouTube, Patreon. It is appreciated. Folks, be well, take care, strengthen up. Bye.
My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Grip Review. For this trip, I'm in Colorado. I've been off trail for about 30 minutes, and I can't wait to see what we get into together. Oftentimes when I come to this state, I'm here for epic views. But with this trip, it's different. This trip is all about complete and total exploration. I'm in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by absolutely no one. It's just you and I, and we're out for an adventure. For this adventure, I am in the Pike National Forest. And instead of views, this trip is all about that unique feeling when you're not sure where you're at, you've never been there before, you don't know what's right around that corner, and you can go anywhere you want to. There's no right way, there's no wrong way. It's thrilling, it's exciting. It is middle July, folks, and let me tell you, the mosquitoes out here are awful. <laughs> they are really bad. The repellent that I'm using, it is a military product, a new military product. This is bullseye bug repellent. It was just recently adopted by the US military. It was assigned an NSN number. The active ingredient is something I cannot pronounce. Listen to these squirrels. That makes me feel like I'm at home. <laughs> ah, now it's getting quiet that I'm getting close. Now you may be wondering, where's Susie? Susie is at the van, she's having an off day. We've been on the road Let's see, this is going on eight, nine days, something like that. So she's having an off day. We've been filming this trip out west here. We've been to South Dakota. We spent roughly four days there, had an amazing time. If you didn't see the first part of this adventure, make sure to check it out because South Dakota is, a... <sighs> because South Dakota is amazingly beautiful. <laughs> All right, everyone, I gotta be honest. Oh, I'm having a hard time breathing. We are a little bit over 10,000 feet and I am just huffing and puffing. <laughs> For now, I'm just heading up on top of this ridge, picking and choosing my direction. Of course, I'm having to vary and veer because there is no path here. This is what the forest is like. As I travel, I'm going slow. I'm paying close attention to everything around me. For an example, we have deer poop. I'm watching for rattlesnakes. I'm looking for bear sign. I'm looking for mountain lions, signs of mountain lions, and so on. Inside of my chest rig here, I do have my handgun. I have a paper map, a compass, at the same time, I'm using my phone to record this trek as a backup. If you are going to go off trail, you have to be smart about it. And I'll talk more about that later on in this episode. I just came across this mushroom and a thought came to mind. Some time back, I was watching YouTube. It's an outdoor channel. I'm not going to mention any names. The channel that I'm talking about, they focus a lot on wild edibles. So in that episode, they came across a mushroom. One buddy said to the other guy, is this edible? And the other guy says, I think so. I think so is probably the scariest answer you could possibly receive. That is not what you want to hear from an outdoor expert. <laughs> I remember watching that and just being like, what the f***? What the f 
here this guy is going around trying to tell people to eat this, eat that. The simple fact is, is that most people should not be eating wild edibles out of the forest. If you haven't been trained hands-on with a specific area about what's edible, don't eat it. Books and guides are a good resource, but they only offer roughly 50% of the information that you need. That's why you need that hands-on education. You need to be told, you need to be shown the different growth stages. You need to see the plants that look just like those. I'm definitely heading up on top of this mountain. I can now see some of the other mountains out here. By the way, the temperature data, that's not accurate. It is not 61 degrees. It was 61 degrees when I lost service this morning when I was making my way out here. This watch does not have a built-in thermometer, but it connects to your phone and uses data that way. But it does have a built-in GPS, and that's how I use it mostly. Now that I've looked this area over, I'm going to stop for a break here, just dry off. The reason why I looked on both sides of this fallen tree is for rattlesnakes. Oftentimes they will hide in the shade. So you have to be careful about the logs you're stepping over and the ones that you're sitting on. Whew. The air is thin, folks. It's been a while since I've been out here, but it is beautiful there's a nice breeze clouds in the sky as you all have seen i have my chest rig on inside of this i have bug repellent batteries for the camera i also have my handgun for quick access the primary threat for this trip is mountain lion i don't expect to have a problem but you have to be careful you have to be able to protect yourself there's a saying, and it goes something along this, like um, when seconds count, help is only minutes away. And in this case, help is hours away. So that's an important lesson to come to grips with. You may be anti-gun, whatever. I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise. That's not the point of the channel. But the point is this, and you can't argue this point. You have to be able to take care of yourself. You have to protect yourself. So if you're going to head out in locations like this, if you're going to do something like this, if you're going to head out anywhere, you have to be able to take care of yourself. It's super, super important. Already there's a risk about being out here. And if you can't take care of yourself, you're adding to that risk. Think of it this way. You wouldn't go out into the desert without water, right? It's the same sort of thing. I'm sure you all have noticed the backpack that I'm wearing for this trip. It's unusual, isn't it? This is a hot shot backpack, a wildland firefighter's backpack. You can see when I'm wearing this, it carries very low like a lumbar pack, with the back being mostly open, so ventilation is top notch with this system. It doesn't carry a whole lot. You can add on to it, you can create more space, but anytime I'm using this pack, I'm going minimal, I'm going lightweight. The heaviest component here is the water. I have quite a bit of water with me. Speaking of which, let's drink some. All right, everyone, let's keep on going. Whoa. Well, I can tell you this much. Things have changed as far as the weather goes. It is uh, getting dark and we have some thunderheads building. Luckily, they're going away from us for now, but we may have some action in a little while. 
When it comes to the Pike Forest, this is not the first time that I've been here. In fact, I've been to the Pike National Forest many, many times. And that's because this place is huge. It is extremely expansive and there's a ton of area to explore. With that being said, I've never been to this area before. This is all brand new and that's what makes it so exciting. I'm definitely getting up here, everyone. I have a nice view now. <sighs> the air is thin. As I was coming up here, I was thinking a little bit more about the point I was making in regards to being able to protect yourself. It's no different than using a GPS unit. It's no different than learning how to read a map and use a compass. It's all about being responsible, not only for yourself, but everyone else. If you go out, you have a problem. You're going to become somebody else's problem. Someone has to come out and look for you. They have to rescue you. That puts them at risk. The forest up here is just beautiful. There's a nice breeze coming through the trees. That's getting stronger as we go up. It's beginning to feel like I might be close to the top of this mountain. We're now at 11,024. And when it got started, before I turned the camera on, I was down around nine. Let's see what's up here. Let's see if this is the top. Take a look at this everyone. That is a huge ant's nest. And I do mean huge. I just heard the very first clap of thunder right over here. Getting rather dark over here. Ooh, it's getting dark over here too. I tell you what, to be on the safe side, I'm going to head down a little bit. It's best not to be on top of this mountain during a nasty thunderstorm, so. I'm going to head down a little bit and find a place to camp for the night. This was super nice though, but all of this looks rather intimidating. Look at this ant nest, everyone. That thing is gigantic. That tree right there is about five feet tall for scale. So it's like two huge nests. Well, folks, this is not bad. I definitely can make this work. It's flat enough. I can get my tarp set up here. Yeah, I think this will do. I'll tell you what. It's not the mosquitoes that are terrorizing me at the moment, it's the black flies. They are relentless. So this bug repellent does not affect them at all. They don't care. <clears throat> In that regards, simple off performs better. I really don't want my jacket on, but it is better than being eaten alive.
perfect. All right, everybody. The day's been cruising on. I have the tarp set up, a seat made. This is where I'm going to spend the night. As far as the area goes, it's nothing all that special. There's no crazy views or anything like that, but there's a feeling to it. I alluded to this earlier in this episode, when you're off trail in an unknown place, yeah, there's a certain level of excitement to it. It's very special. It is worth gaining some knowledge as far as reading a map goes, expanding your navigational skills, to be able to come out and do something like this. It's worth the effort. Cheers. Oh man, it's looking rather nasty over this direction. Over here about the same. We have some blue sky over here. This is going to be one of those trips, folks. It may rain, it may not. I've been hearing thunder for the last hour or so, but so far it's been staying away from us. You can hear that clap right there. As it stands, folks, we are surrounded by storms. There's one over here that's going away from us and it is rocking and rolling. But there's also another one over here that seems to be coming this way. As I'm making coffee here, I was thinking about our travels across the country. We were coming through Wyoming. After spending a few days there, we didn't film that. But um, we stopped at the gas station and like on one side was a coffee shop. The other side was like a liquor store. And then in the middle was the convenience store. So we're pumping gas and I see this vehicle pull in and it's full of like Boy Scouts, right? So I'm pumping gas, the kids get out and they walk straight into that liquor store. And all of a sudden they turn right around and come right back out. The entire time, whoever was like in charge of them wasn't watching. They were fairly young kids. It was pretty hilarious actually. That makes me think back to when my son was young. We were out of town at some mall and Susie and Maddie, they were shopping. Lucas and I, we were bumming around, and we walked past this store. I didn't look what it was, and inside was like a race car. It looked like you can get inside of it. So I'm like, oh, let's go check that out. So we walk in, and like this woman's like, oh, I don't think you should come in here with him. And I'm like, why not? W what is this place? It wasn't Viagra, but it did the same thing. So that was pretty funny. Anyways, anyways, let's uh, make this coffee. <sighs> Coffee time, everyone. Cheers. Oh, man. It's pretty nasty. Just the way I like it. As you all can hear, it's raining. It's not very heavy, but it is coming down. There's now a thunderstorm behind us. I don't know if it's coming this way or not, but it's definitely active. This is a pretty nice spot, everyone. It's relatively flat, but also there's a nice breeze coming through so I could stay cool. As far as the mosquitoes and the flies go, that activity has died down quite a bit. I was this close to getting a fire going. Now later on tonight, if everything goes according to plan, I will have a fire. It is wet enough that I can have one. That was actually a concern of mine before coming out here. This entire area is so dry, but luckily last night it rained 
it's raining now. I'm pretty sure we can get away with it, unless it just pours. You never know. That might actually happen. By the way, everyone, I guess I should tell you all what this adventure is about, just in case you didn't see part one. Approximately a week and a half ago, Susie and I, we set out from North Carolina, and we made our way to South Dakota. From there, we camped out in the van for multiple days. We did some overlanding, had an amazing time. South Dakota is without a doubt one of my favorite states ever. It is so beautiful. Again, if you haven't watched part one, you definitely should, because wow, it is incredible. I will be back. There's no doubt about it. From South Dakota, we went into Wyoming, but we didn't film any of that. Then we headed down into Colorado. We are heading to a location to film a backpacking adventure. I'm not going to tell you all where it is in this episode, but at the very end of this episode, I will give you a huge hint. It is epic. Some people have never seen anything like this, I assure you. It is truly awesome. Susie and I were both tired from traveling, so we decided to take a day. She's taking it easy, and I came out here to do this camping trip. I'm not sure if you all can see it, but it is absolutely pouring outside of the forest here. Now I'm really glad that I came down from the top of that mountain. It was beautiful up there, but it was way too exposed. We should take a second and talk about storm camping. It is one of my favorite things to do. If you plan to do it, you'll love it. The thing is this, there's risk involved. There's a risk involved with anything and everything, but if you're gonna go out camping in storms, you have to realize that, yeah, there's a possibility you can get struck by lightning. You can do everything by the book, you can do everything right, and you can still get struck by lightning. So it's one of those things. Risk versus reward. <laughs> I, I apologize if I'm talking funny. I'm so out of breath. <laughs> <coughs> I'm out of breath, but I'm not having any sort of elevation sickness. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm definitely out of breath. Speaking of which, we settled at... 10,669 feet. Hmm, it's getting active. There's a thunderstorm over here, and there's another one over here. They're just continuously like cycling and falling down. So, meh, I don't know. What I do know is that it's getting quite chilly. I don't have a thermometer with me, so I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'm glad to have this jacket, and I'm glad to have pants on. <laughs> it's so dark, I went ahead and I fired up this lantern for it to be 2.30 in the afternoon. It's dark. That storm over there, which seems to be getting closer to us, is rocking and rolling. I've seen a couple wicked flashes. As you all can hear, it's raining rather good. So far, no hail or anything like that. Yeah, it's coming down. There's been a shift in the wind. It's now coming this direction, and at times it's blowing moisture underneath this tarp, so I may need to lower this down. If I have to, I will. So far, it hasn't been a big deal, but I'm prepared to do so.
Get ready, everyone. That lightning was right over there. There is a cell right back here. Striking pretty close. So far though, staying nice and dry, the uh, wind direction has changed again. Instead of coming this way, it's now going this way. That tells me that the atmosphere is unstable and that anything is possible. You all could see just how hard it's raining. Some of that is blowing in. So I went ahead and took my jacket and I covered up my gear just to keep everything dry. So much for having a fire tonight. That's now out of the question. Everything is soaking wet. Water's just pouring from the trees. There's nothing dry. It's raining so hard, in fact, it's like a river of water moving downhill. <laughs> it is getting windy, but so far I'm staying dry right here in the center of this tarp. My gear is protected, so I'm in good shape. Folks, it is flooding up here. There's actually a torrent of water coming down the mountain. It's been raining hard for over an hour now. Just non-stop thunder. I'm not sure if you all can hear me, but it now sounds like there's a wicked storm right over here coming this way. Get ready. That was right over there. <laughs> Close enough to make the hair on my arm stand up. As you all can see here, I've dug a little trench to divert the water over this direction. That way it doesn't go underneath my tarp. That way everything over here stays dry. I'm not exactly sure what the temperature is, but I can tell you that the rain is ice cold. By just digging that little trench there, my hand is frozen. Being caught out in this could be a death sentence. Hypothermia, just like that. It's almost four o'clock now. It's been raining for numerous hours. Just non-stop, storm after storm after storm. <laughs> I wish I could show you all more than just this, but it is what it is. This is the only dry place for miles. When it comes to the van and Susie, she's roughly three miles away. 
This is the only dry place for three miles, in other words. I'm sure she's loving this. In the van, relaxing. She's warm. <laughs> for a while there, I was beginning to get a headache. It could be a little bit of elevation sickness or possibly dehydration. Elevation sickness can be brought on by dehydration, so I'm making sure to drink quite a bit of water and already I'm feeling better. I would send Susie a text to check on her, but unfortunately there is no service here. We are in a very remote area, so phones don't work. I'm sure she's doing well though. She can take care of herself. Susie's a very strong woman. There is absolutely nothing she can't do. That's for sure. It's interesting being back in Colorado. This is a very unique state in many ways. First off, the roads are the worst in the country. Even worse than Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee roads are fantastic compared to this. <laughs> Illinois roads, they're pretty bad, but yeah, Colorado, you win. Worst roads ever. They suck. But it is an interesting state. Pro pot, pro gun. Just about every vehicle on the road is a big truck of some sort. Just about everywhere you look is some sort of garbage. Old debris, old buildings, old vehicles. It's really, really unique. It feels very much like the state where anything goes. Basically, you could do anything that you want to. In a way, I can respect that. Talking about Colorado and their interesting policies, I did see on a National Forest website, and I don't remember which one because I've looked at so many trying to figure out where I was going to go. By the way, with this trip, the entire trip, Susie and I have just played it like off of the cuff. We have basically woke up every morning, decided where we're going to go from there. Anyway, so I've looked at a ton of different National Forest websites, and I don't remember which one it was, but one of them said, if you're going to have a fire, don't build a fire ring because they're unsightly. Who gives it? The purpose of a fire ring is to keep the fire contained. When just about every single home in Colorado is surrounded with junk and garbage, who cares about a fire ring? Makes no sense to me. I wish I had service so I could look that up and tell you which website that was on, but that is ridiculous. Maybe that's why Colorado has so many forest fires. <laughs> I am going to have a real termat meal for dinner. I've never tried this. This is a chicken soup. We'll see, we'll see how it is. Now it's pretty funny folks. Recently, I received an email from, what was the guy's name? I think it was like Marcus or something or other. I don't quite remember exactly. But anyways, this guy, he sent me an email and he was so upset. I mean, he was like cursing, he's really upset that I eat real termat meals and other freeze-dried meals. He says that they are packed full of chemicals, just full of garbage, and I had to school him a little bit because unfortunately he didn't know what he was talking about. When it comes to freeze-dried meals, oftentimes these have less chemicals and additives than like stuff you would buy at the grocery store, and that's because it's freeze-dried. The process of freeze-drying a meal means basically you have those basic ingredients they're freeze-dried, and they need very few chemicals to actually make this work. Now, of course, that's not the case with all freeze-dried meals. Like the really cheap ones, those Wise meals are complete garbage all the way around. Nothing about those is real, but with real Termat, 99% of the ingredients are recognizable. There's only two things on here which are like chemicals, actually. So it's chicken, salt, pepper. Then you have the stabilizer, E450, E451, coconut milk, rapeseed oil, wheat flour, bell pepper, onion, leek, soy sauce, soy, salt, vinegar, lime juice, chicken, bouillon, blah, 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 blah. You can see it on the screen here. The E450 and the E451, basically those go into reconstituting this meal. 
whatever that is basically allows it to be reconstituted. You can look all this stuff up if you want to. So I wrote this guy back, I schooled him a little bit, and boy did that piss him off. And I had a fantastic time talking to this guy. He was so sensitive, so emotional. It was really funny. He did not like being educated. He really got upset about that. And any time that I brought up a point to correct something that he said, he would move on to something else. That was uh, most interesting, most humorous. Send me your address, dude. I'll send you a box of tissues, man. <laughs> I have this chicken soup here. We'll see just how filling this is. I do have an extra meal if I need it. I have to be honest, I'm getting tired. <sighs> Sitting underneath this tarp for most of the day, with it raining, has made me sleepy. I'm about ready to hop into my sleeping bag, get warm and comfortable. All right, let's go ahead and try this soup. That is not what I expected. I mean, that is really, really good. This tastes like a meal called Chicken Supreme. I'll have to make Chicken Supreme in the future, maybe at the cabin. It is so good. This is like a variation of it, more of like a soup. It's fantastic. This chicken soup is a whole lot more hearty than I expected it to be. I think at least for now, I'm not going to need anything else. I was hoping to do a little bit more exploring, but I don't think that's going to happen. It looks like we're just socked in, but hey, at least I'll sleep good tonight. As I get ready for bed, I'm going to lower this tarp down so I can have more protection. I might even close up one or maybe even both sides, create doors. That way I can limit airflow and splash back inside of here. My setup tonight is very simple. It's a simple bug tent that I'm going to attach to the tarp. Very simple, very minimal. Well, folks, it is time for bed. It is 8.40. It's getting dark out there. It's still raining, just sprinkling away. It has not stopped all day long. It has just non-stop thunderstorm after thunderstorm after thunderstorm. I'm impressed. That was good. I did not expect that, but hey, fantastic. I did check the weather before I left and it said there was a chance of storms, but it wasn't all that great. It was only like a 40% chance. This is the sort of setup that I love. You have the full protection of the tarp, the airflow of a bug tent, it's perfect. Right now it's about 58 degrees. All I have to do is just hop inside of my sleeping bag here and call it a night, which I think I will do right now. Hopefully it stops raining by morning. That way I have a dry hike out of here. It's interesting how the forest unfolds from this point. As you come down here, it opens up, and the forest floor is very unique. There's very little underbrush, so it's like you can basically just walk anywhere you want to. It's pretty cool. We certainly don't have anything like that in North Carolina. <sighs> in fact, with our forests, you really can't walk through them. There's too many briars, too much brush, too many bushes, and so on. 
everyone, I'm going to say good night for now. Good night. We'll see you all in the morning. I'm looking forward to going to sleep, listening to the rain. Good night, everybody. See you soon. Good grief. You guys hear that? It sounds like that coyote's like right over there. It's close. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> that woke me up though. Startled me too, actually. Sound like a freaking wolf. I don't think there's wolves out here. Could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Back to sleep. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, weird. I slept in. It is 8.25 in the morning. I slept really, really good last night. I mean, I went to bed like, I don't know, 9 o'clock, something like that. Passed out. I think it was about 2.30, heard that coyote. And ever since then, it's just been quiet. It got really foggy last night after the rain stopped. And now it's just kind of breezy, cool, very cool. I'd say the temps are in the 40s right now. It's that chilly. I have, without a doubt, pushed the limits of my swagman role. <laughs> I was uh, a little bit chilly until the sun started to come up. But, hey, that's okay. This, this trip was all about going minimal. That's what I did. Very lightweight. I wanted to move fast, and I was able to. Let's get up, everybody. I want to show you all this open forest, what I call the open forest. It's really neat. So... Let's get some coffee. Whoa. I hear you. While I'm warming up the water for coffee, I'm going to take the time and dry off my tarp. This is nice, everybody. Very nice. I have the tarp all wiped down. It's drying. Coffee's made. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Ah, yeah. That's good. For this morning, 
I'm going to hurry and get out of here. And there's multiple reasons why. First off, the mosquitoes and the black flies will be out soon. Right now it's a little bit too cold, but they're coming. Next, I want to get back to Susie, get to the van. There's a mosquito, a couple of mosquitoes. We have roughly a four hour drive to our next destination. And folks, it is going to be incredible. Just wait. Oh yeah, the mosquitoes are out. Mm-hmm. I see them flying around already. Put my collar up, protect my neck. Last night, I had all sorts of crazy dreams. I would wake up and my heart would be racing. That happens every single time that I'm at high elevation. It doesn't fail. I've definitely felt this elevation more so than the previous trips. I'm still winded. Super, super winded. <laughs> it's like I'm drying off the tarp and I'm huffing and puffing, right? By the way, everyone, this is my setup. Tarp bug net, a half pad, swagman roll, and then the hot shot bag in the back. Very minimal setup. Most of the weight that I was carrying was water. I didn't have time to look at the map in good enough detail to figure out if there's a water source nearby, so I just cameled up. <laughs> this was more of like a spontaneous trip. We were coming through the area. I love the Pike National Forest. So yeah, we had the time, pulled over, did the trip. I tell you what, we have the time because our kids are grown. We have no ties back at home. And because of that, Susie and I can basically go do anything that we want to. That's pretty cool. I've been asked, whether or not Susie and I have like empty nest syndrome, no way, not at all. I tell you what, we raised our kids to be independent and that started at a very young age. And when you teach your kids to be independent, they become responsible. Certain things go hand in hand. So both of our kids are off living their lives, doing their thing. Just in case you don't know, our daughter's in the Navy, our son, he's at college and uh, yeah, everybody's doing great. Susie and I are doing great. We're out exploring. Cheers to exploring, everyone. <laughs> it is nonstop planes up here. <laughs> the airport must have just opened, okay? Because it's just nonstop. All right, everyone. While I finish up my coffee, I'm going to break everything down, pack it up. Let's get to hiking. We have some place we need to be in a couple of hours. I've been hiking for half a mile now, getting over the top of that hill. I didn't film that, so you all didn't have to listen to me huff and puff. <laughs> because I was, because I was. With this forest here, what I call the open forest, at some point in time, it's been logged. And because of that, it's open. It is so easy to go anywhere you want. Look at that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I am heading down here. No matter where you go here, it will hit a road. And from there, I can make it back to the van. Make it back to Susie. Thank you all so much for joining me for this trip. This was a great one. That was one intense line of storms that came through yesterday. That was sweet. Here in a minute, I'll be down to the road. I'll say goodbye. And then Susie and I will begin our travels to our next destination. And again, everyone, this place is going to be epic. 
epic. Hopefully, the weather will cooperate. We shall see. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I did not see this when I came in. So apparently I'm not the only one who likes to go up into the mountains here. Check it out. Someone's been building a teepee. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. To me, this screams, we got started, we saw how much work it was going to take, and they stopped. Oftentimes when it comes to shelters like this, you think it's going to be easy. You think you're going to do it in no time. No, that's not the case. If you have an army of people working together, you could do something like that in a few hours. But otherwise, it's going to take a long time. I can tell that that is super, super, super old. Not by the TP itself, but by everything else. So here on the ground, we have some firewood. It has begun to rot. Over here is a fire pit. And there hasn't been a fire in this in over five years. Easy. Okay. I actually see the road down there, so I'm headed the right direction. Let's go and wrap this up, folks. Before I say goodbye, I would like to encourage all of you to begin working on expanding your navigation skills. Look locally for someone who can teach you. Look for a class. Trust me, you'll be thankful that you did it. It will open up a world of possibilities as far as adventure goes. With the trails being so busy these days, so overrun, with locations like this, you're not going to see anyone. You're going to be able to get away, be by yourself, and have an amazing time. My friends, welcome to part three of the summer 2022 road trip. Susie and I are out on some BML land, dispersed camping, right below this incredible mountain. As it stands right now, we are surrounded by rain and thunderstorms. There are storms all over the place. The lightning has been incredible so far. As it stands right now, a big storm is coming this way and it should begin raining within the hour. About 15 minutes from here is the Great Sand Dune National Park and tomorrow, Susie and I are going there to explore with you all. Unfortunately, our plans for that trip have changed and that's because of the weather, unfortunately. Originally, when we planned to do this, we were going to do a backpacking trip, but the forecast for tomorrow and for the next week is nothing but strong storms, just like what they're receiving today. Because of the forecast, our only chance to experience those sand dunes is to get out there early tomorrow morning, and that's the plan. I can't wait. 
it is insanely beautiful over there or at least the pictures that I've seen they are they are the tallest sand dunes in North America and folks it's gonna be sweet I'm a little disappointed that we can't stay there and backpack but the chance of storms is incredibly high. Because of COVID and how things are different, it's kind of difficult to get permits and everything that you need. So we took a guess, got our permit. We have everything printed out, but the weather's not gonna cooperate. And even if we changed it a day earlier or a day later, it's not going to cooperate. So I think we will just have to hike and explore. It is what it is, unfortunately. But nonetheless, we are going to have a great time. That I promise you. Oh no, everyone, it is beginning to rain. We waited too long. Let's try to rush and get this done. Together, Susie and I, we tag teamed it. We got it done. We are surrounded by rain right now. There's a big wall coming this way. You can see it over here. This is so cool. <laughs> this is so cool. I don't know how this really plays out with like the Great Sand Dunes National Park. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm excited to go check it out. I can imagine like every bit of it like sticking to you. <laughs> I know. Sounds miserable. I don't know. I know. We have no idea what to expect, but... I don't know, we're gonna eat dinner, turn in, and try to get there early. Maybe the passing storm and rain tonight will be short and sweet, and we will see. Knows? We will see. For dinner tonight, we are having roast beef sandwiches and a Caesar salad. I tried to make it very quick, and it's probably cold already, but we were racing against the rain. <laughs> <laughs> we got it done? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Behind us is Mount Blanca, I believe. That's a 14,000 foot peak, I think. The road up here is super, super rough. This is about as far as we wanted to go, and luckily we have a good spot. From what I understand, it's another couple of miles to the actual trailhead. We have the sun setting over here. We have lightning and rain coming this direction over here. We have this mountain behind us. It does not get any better than that. <laughs> no, no complaints. <laughs> no complaints. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to have dinner, call it a night. We will see you all in the morning. Let the adventure begin. Cheers. Cheers. We got it done in the nick of time. I mean, it's right over there. The wall of rain is right there. <laughs>
we've made it out to the Great Sand Dunes National Park. And currently, we're trying to navigate this creek bed. It's about 7.30 a.m. The sun is up, but luckily, it's behind the clouds over here. We stayed on some BLM land about 15 minutes away from here last night. Had a great night. The thing is, it rained last night. It stormed last night. So now, there's quite a bit of water here. This makes it kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of a game. Can you get across without your feet getting wet? I think we're getting wet, folks. That's a torrent of water right there. That's the definition of a torrent. Okay, so Susie, she's going down this way. I think her resistance is futile. For this adventure, everyone, Susie and I, we went with two different philosophies here. I went with flip-flops, she went with shoes. I'm not sure which one's the right one to go with. I guess we'll find out together. Hmm. Whoa, this is like quicksand. Well, I'm wet, screw it. Yeah, it's pretty cold, but it feels good. That's my philosophy. Just get it done, who cares? Now Susie, she's on the other side of this river. Hey, I have an idea, piggyback ride. Does this feel unstable to you? Nope, feels great. <laughs> <laughs> I love this part. Just go up the dunes like this. I'm a porter. Is this the entire hike? Like I get to ride on your back? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so. Okay, you can drop me now. No, I kind of like it. Huh. I don't see any other husbands out here carrying their wives across this. No, you're one of a kind. <laughs> wow, everyone. This is really, really cool. These are the tallest sand dunes in North America. And here in a moment, We'll be away from everyone else. And that's because Susie and I, we're off to do our own thing. Right after I give Susie another piggyback ride. Here we go. Across another river. Here at the Great Sand Dunes, this place is massive. So while there are a lot of people here, the main thing that they come to do is to sled down the dunes. But luckily there's so much space, it doesn't take long to get away from everybody. On screen, these dunes may not look that tall but they are. The tallest one is 750 feet. How about that? One cool thing about this place is that you can disperse camp here. All you have to do is get above the highest point. Once you're past that, you can camp anywhere you want. Originally, our plan was to backpack here, stay the night, but the chance of rain and storms is just too high. Every single day in Colorado, nonstop storms. In fact, the road coming out here was flooded. They had to use a bulldozer to open it at some point in time yesterday. As Luke mentioned, we had a permit so we could do some backpacking here. There are about 20 permits that they have each day for people to disperse camp on the dunes and you have to get those online. So it can be a little bit tricky because you have to plan ahead, know when you're coming and have all of that information printed out. Unfortunately, all week long, the chance of storms and rain is just too high in the afternoon. So we didn't wanna be caught out here in a bad storm or in a flooding situation. So we came out here this morning to do some hiking and to enjoy the dunes. I think it's better to get to see them and have this experience than not at all. Susie and I are getting started early this morning out here on the dunes, and that's because you pretty much have to. In the warmer months, the temperature of the sand can get up to like 150 degrees. So if you wanna come out here and play, explore, do it early, do it late. If you're going to backpack the dunes, it's recommended that you come in the afternoon, then head over. Get started around six o'clock, you'll be in good shape. One of the most striking elements to this location is that you are surrounded by these mountains. I mean, there are peaks all the way around. It is so cool. If you decide to come out here, you're gonna love it. And as Susie said, this place is big enough where everybody can go off and explore in their own location 
We're over here on this side and we see absolutely no one. We are about to start climbing up the sand and so far walking across has been very easy. The sand is hard packed. We will see what this climb up is going to be like. I can't wait to get to the top. This place is just absolutely incredible. I've never ever seen anything like this. When you think of sand and dunes, you automatically think of the beach and we are nowhere near a beach. Susie, it's as hard as a rock. <laughs> it's like walking on concrete. It is, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. We're walking along here and we're coming across some tracks. I'm pretty sure this person has six toes. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. If you have six toes, hit the thumbs up. If you have five, hit the thumbs up. There goes Luke. I think he's having way too much fun out here on the dunes. The interesting thing about these is it's estimated that you need an hour to an hour and a half to reach the top. But what's funny is you can come down in about 15 minutes or less. I almost feel like the rain hitting this area has been a benefit to us hiking on these because it's really packed. Which way do you want to go, Susie? Shall we go over here and then work our way up? Or should we just go for it? Straight up and over. Extremely difficult, easy. Easy. Okay. Now when it comes to like the sledding and whatnot, you can rent those here, I guess. Susie and I have no desire to do that. I, I do not want to cram sand into every orifice of my body. Susie and I, we've been out here for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, something like that. And already it is warming up. You can tell that this place gets hot and it gets hot fast. Luckily the sun is in the clouds, but it won't be for much longer. The jackets have to come off. It is getting hot. Right now it's towards the end of July and you're looking at temperatures during the day around 80 degrees. As a refresher, Susie and I, we've been on the road for roughly two weeks now. We've been overlanding the entire time. We spent about a week in South Dakota, which was incredible. We cruised over to Wyoming, then into Colorado. This is the last leg of our trip. Once we get done with this, we're headed back home to North Carolina. Wow. As soon as you get to the top of one of these dunes, you look around and it's really, really impressive. When it comes to our adventures, Luke and I are done exploring Colorado. We have seen every part of this state and while we haven't done every trail or every mountain by any means, there are other places that we want to explore. Because we've explored so much of Colorado, it's time to move on to different states, everyone. South Dakota has my attention right now. I really, really enjoyed my time there. It's beautiful. It's so quiet and peaceful. We saw no one. There's a lot of opportunity to go off trail to explore all by yourself. And I'm looking forward to doing more of that in the future. We started down there. We've come up, coming up this dune here. We are going to follow this ridge and just keep on going. If this wasn't wet and hard packed, this would be extremely difficult. But as is, this is pretty easy. We're still huffing and puffing due to the elevation. Speaking of which, 8,473. As you all know, Luke and I love Colorado. We have been to this state so many times. We've had amazing adventures here. We've done some incredible backpacking trips. One thing I have learned over the years is the best way to see the country is to travel by car 
that's where you really get to see everything about our country and you see the bad and the good. It is pretty striking as you're hiking on this. Again, you have these mountains, but then over here you have the prairie. I mean, it's just unreal. Because of the Great Sand Dune National Park, that's why we're back in Colorado for this adventure. Susie has been wanting to come here for so long and the time was right. So Susie, what do you think so far? It's amazing. I mean, it's definitely worth seeing. We're starting to go up this extremely steep area here. It's deceptive. When we were back there, it didn't look this steep, but it is. To give you all an idea of scale and just how steep this is, Susie will stay here, I will run up here. Oh boy, I don't think I'm going to be able to run up that sand dune like Luke. Oh, there he is. I think he got his cardio in for today. This place has been on my list for like the last couple of trips to Colorado. and We never had time to come down here. We were always in a different part of Colorado. I'm glad that we took the time to come back. Definitely America has some beautiful national parks and you can really see beautiful landscapes by visiting them. If you want a leg workout, run up this. <laughs> as far as the dunes go, there are no venomous snakes out here. No rattlesnakes. There's no bears. They stay up in the mountains. There are mountain lion out here, but there's never been a recorded attack. If you're going to come out here, bring lots of water. Also, wear light colored clothing. This will get you to huff and puff, that's for sure. Judging scale is difficult when you're watching it on a screen. If Susie was to take that water bottle and put it on the ground, it would shoot off like a rocket. <laughs> because this is steep. It's disorienting being at 8,000 feet in elevation. So usually what I do when I need to take a break, I'll actually kind of squat down. And I just feel like it helps ground me because when you're out of breath and you're climbing and you are at a higher elevation, when you stop to rest, you can almost get dizzy feeling and that can cause you to fall. And the last thing you wanna do is fall because you're gonna roll and roll and roll down this sand dune. And you will be covered in sand. We are almost to the top of one of the highest dunes. Look at that spine. How neat is that? Once you're at this point, you can camp anywhere you want to. I would recommend down in a depression. That's going to block some wind. If the sand is dry and it's windy, it will blow all over the place. And it's going to blow inside of your tent and there's nothing you could do to stop it. If you decide to come out here to backpack, you best love sand. Now you may be wondering, what about thunderstorms out here? Thunderstorms are a real possibility, it happens. If you get caught in one, go to the lowest depression possible, sit on top of your backpack and crouch down and hope and pray, rub your lucky rabbit's foot, whatever you wanna do. The best thing is to get out before the storm gets here. You do not wanna get caught in a thunderstorm out here. Lightning will strike the dunes. When you're at the top here, you really see just how expansive this is. And that's something I didn't realize. This place is massive. It just keeps on going. Oh my God. You could tell she used to rollerblade, folks. You can tell. <laughs>
It's nine o'clock in the morning now. The sun is still obscured a little bit, but I could tell you already at nine o'clock with full sun, it would be hot, really, really hot. I don't see anybody camping, Susie. Every single permit was taken for last night and there's no one out here. No one's been out here. You could tell everybody's going up to the ridges here, the first ones, and that's it. No campers, which is smart because it rocked and rolled yesterday. It looks like we have clouds building over here, coming this direction. It's probably a good time to start making our way down from here. What do you think, Susie? In just a couple of hours, it calls for storms and the chance is like 80%, so it's definitely coming. The best thing to do is to start making our way off of the dunes. I'm so thankful that we got to experience it though. I went ahead and put my jacket back on. That way, blocks some of the sun here. The weather's definitely changing. The mountain over here is being engulfed in clouds. We'll make it back to the van after we uh, cross the river. Are you ready for a piggyback ride? Yes! <laughs> That's the best part. Heck yeah. Look how that mountain is now being engulfed in clouds. Yeah. Things are changing. Things are building. Yep. I am so glad that we were able to come out here and experience this place for Susie. It's unfortunate that we couldn't backpack, but that's okay. We still got the full experience. If you haven't come out here before, you definitely should. Susie, let's make our way back to the van, shall we? Sounds good. It's coffee time. Coffee, coffee. I think of that movie Dante's Peak, which is actually one of my favorite movies. I also read the book. But um, there's that one guy and he's like, coffee, 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 coffee. <laughs> coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> Cappuccino. <would> be... <laughs> it's so hard to tolerate me and my addiction. I have to live with that, folks. An addict. Have the strangest feeling to know what to believe in. Because mm. every time you touch me, I can't control my body. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. Cheers, viewers. This adventure is coming to an end, folks. After I don't know how many days on the road, I can't even <laughs> count that high, it's time for us to go back to North Carolina. Yep, we have about three to four days as we make our way back to North Carolina. We really won't be doing anything. We're going to be traveling through the middle of the country. 
This was a time of the year that was the hottest across the country in many places. This whole trip everywhere that we traveled has just been the hottest temperatures on record for many of the places that we super, were at. Super, super hot. When we were at the Badlands, someone actually died that day. They had gotten lost, didn't have enough water. Their cell phone service there, they were able to call for help, but they passed away before help could get to them. Yeah, we were there and we got out, did a little bit of hiking. We were taking some photos, things like that. I mean, you could just feel the sun frying your skin. For most of that trek through the Badlands, we were driving and just looking at the scenery. And then a few days later, just reading news headlines, we saw that someone had died the exact day that we were there. And you can totally see why. Oh, yeah. You need lots of water for these places. But it's like, it's really deceptive. It's like 103 degrees or whatever, but it's windy. So it's like, it feels so much cooler than it really is. Our condolences to the family there. Let's see, when we went over to Wyoming, we went to the Devil's Tower, didn't film any of that. There was numerous people suffering from heat stroke. It, it was actually kind of a weird situation. You could tell like these are tourists. Some people, they had sweaters on. Like they were accustomed to like the AC in their RVs. It was chilly to them. They get out, it's breezy. They're walking around and all of a sudden it hits you. You and I were dressed appropriately. Lots of water, lots of shade and it was hot as hell. We had so much fun. We saw so many things on this trip. South Dakota, I fell in love with it. It was absolutely amazing. It was just beautiful. The feeling there was just incredible. This was one of those trips where we just wanted to bring you guys along and show you, hey, look at all that you can do. And we did this on a budget. At the very end of this episode, we will go over all of the stats, including the most common broken down vehicle, how much time we spent driving, how many miles, how much it cost on fuel, how much we spent on food, water, and so on. So let's go over our thoughts about this trip, as we always do. Susie, what was your favorite state? My favorite state was South Dakota. Okay, what was your favorite place that we explored along the way? My favorite place on this trip was Custer State Park, which is in South Dakota. That place is amazing. It's a beautiful drive. Beautiful. There's some amazing viewpoints with just like short hiking and we had such a cool experience there with Buffalo Which is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted that cool experience that you see everyone having when they drive through like Yellowstone mm -hmm. and, and like big parks like that so we had that in Custer. It was special. Anytime that you see those videos where people are like getting out of their vehicles and they're messing with those bison Those people are pure idiots those animals are so big. I've never seen one. That was the first time. Yeah, I don't know why you would want to mess with them. I mean, <laughs> yeah. just, you know, we are in their space. We are in their territory, so... They let, own it, and they know it. They do. Let them do what they gotta do. <laughs> it was my first buffalo traffic jam, and I loved every mm -hmm. minute of it. So that's gonna stand out for me on this trip. It's just something so simple. Like, anybody can go have that experience, you know? Let's see, my favorite state, without a doubt, was South Dakota, amazingly beautiful. It was just so well taken care of. The way that they like work to prevent like forest fires and whatnot is really, really smart. And it's something that the rest of the country should be doing, especially California. And I believe, not talking politics, but I think Trump actually recommended this to them. You can see this taking place in South Dakota. They have groups, they have teams that go through the forest, picking up all the deadfall, putting it in piles. That way, if there is a fire, it's easier to control because the fuel's not all over the place. It's really, really smart. Anyways, I absolutely loved it. I cannot wait to go back. Heading back in the fall when it's cool, there's just so much exploring to do. Custer State Park was absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed that. That was special. Mm -hmm. For myself, my least favorite were the Mount Rushmore attraction and the Crazy Horse attraction. Neither one of those really did much for me. Like uh, Mount Rushmore is cool from a technical aspect. For this trip, because we had unlimited time, we were so close to some of these touristy things that I wanted to <laughs> take a little bit of time and go to them because it's once in a lifetime. You know, you're, you're an hour from this place or two hours from this place, so you might as well just go see it. And they are tourist attractions. They're super busy, not super fun. It wasn't super impressive, but it was kind of one of those things where I was like, well, I want to see it while I'm here. And it was like the least favorite part yeah. of the trip. So the Devil's Tower, that was cool. Devil's Tower was really cool. I grew up watching a movie that's called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And you that... all have seen 
seen that. Everybody has had to have seen that. <laughs> so I've just kind of dreamed about seeing that place forever. And the same with Mount Rushmore, actually. That was in a movie that I watched as a kid. And I always thought, wow, that would be so cool to see. Mm -hmm. And then I saw it and I really, I was like, okay. I mean, it's, I thought it would be bigger, but I guess because you're still so far away from it. I think there are trails that take you closer, but it was so hot. Yeah. Been there, done that, checked it off. That was probably the least favorite part. We mm -hmm. didn't show too much of the touristy extra stuff that we did. Yeah. Least favorite state. I would have to say this time it was Colorado. It's kind of a bittersweet sort of thing. It's like Colorado is super, super beautiful. But like this time, like the amount of garbage out here. I guess maybe it's like I was filming, so I'm just really focused on it. But it's like every single shot I was trying to take, it's like there's this big pile of crap over here. There's this stripped out vehicle over here. It's like this busted up this. And I mean, it's just garbage everywhere. And I think like after a couple of days of like trying to film around this, I was getting frustrated. It really does taint the experience. So it's like you have like this amazing landscape with so much crap everywhere. Right, I agree. Colorado was my least favorite part of this trip. It's interesting that we ended up going through South Dakota because I wanted to drive a different way. That's the only reason we headed that direction. And that turned out to be the best part. Mm -hmm. As soon as we hit Colorado, the traffic was really bad that day. The roads went straight to hell. Yeah, it was stressful just getting into Colorado that day. It's so like the drivers, like, I think it's uh, a, like, they're the worst in Colorado than any other state. And it shows, like, I mean, it's just nonsense. I mean, just people just doing this and then slamming in the walls, causing, causing huge accidents. It was just, it was really aggressive driving. So after a week of being in South Dakota and Wyoming where there's not a lot of traffic. <laughs> you don't see anybody. It was overwhelming. And we got to Colorado. We have done the things that we wanted to do, but I kind of feel like I'm, it's the last I'm time. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Again, like if you live here, not trying to hurt your feelings, not trying to upset you. We talk to people who live here mm -hmm. who say the exact same thing. We talk to people who are leaving the state for those reasons and others. Anyways, we do love Colorado even though there's disappointing aspects. Uh, let's see here. Favorite meal on this trip. For myself, we stopped someplace in Iowa. I don't even know the name. I think it was Iowa. It was called Teriyaki Madness, I'm pretty sure. That was freaking awesome. That was my favorite too. We love Asian food and Chinese food and things like that. This was really good. They nailed all their sauces. They gave yeah. you extra. It was really, really good. It was freaking awesome. If you yeah. have one in your area, you're lucky. That's, yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> we had never heard of it. We just saw it and thought, well, that would be a good meal to try. So uh, was that your favorite? That was my favorite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Worst, least favorite, I guess I should say. Least favorite meal? Buffalo hot I know, dog. <laughs> I know you're going to say the hot dog. That was my least favorite. Okay, mine too. Yeah. I think that's it. I think we are going to head back to North Carolina. We really appreciate you guys joining us for this road trip, summer 2022. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed following us along on our travels. There may possibly be a fall trip coming up. So we shall see. If you're interested in our van setup and what we use and why we use it, we did film a video going over everything in here. So make sure to check the channel. You'll find that. But folks, we are done. Enjoy the montage. As we go home, we'll go over some stats. Susie, let's go home. Let's go home. Guys, gals, let's go home. Strength and honor to you all. Hit the thumbs up before you go. It does help the channel. If you want to support the channel, the Outdoor Gear Review is agenda free. We're here to share our experiences will tell you how it is. The good, the bad, we'll show the good and the bad. Don't get too mad about us hating on Colorado <laughs> and all your garbage out here. By the way, clean the shit up. All right, take care, strength and honor. Bye for now. Bye. Baby, baby, hold me in your arms tonight. Don't move an inch It's like you're laying in the perfect light Ooh, it don't be just you and me and nothing else No distractions, just attraction 
your touch, need your warmth, need your everything. Would have been me, you and nothing else. No distractions, just attraction. Something about you makes me lose my inhibitions. So, baby.